In this video, I'm going to be going over the process of installing Mac ports on Mac OS Sierra. The process should be about the same on other versions of Mac OS, but I'm just using Sierra for this demonstration. Um, I'm starting off with a very clean uh, install of Mac OS, so I don't have anything installed on it at this point. Um, and the process will be installing Xcode and then downloading and installing Mac ports and then running a couple things on the terminal. And finally, uh, finally I'll finish up by installing FFmpeg and uh, we'll change the encoding on a video, just as a demonstration. So to get started, we'll open up the Mac App Store. So I'll uh, open up Spotlight by hitting Command Space. Uh, you can you know, click in your application folder or whatever. But we'll open up the App Store. We'll search here for Xcode. And then we'll hit get and install app. This will ask for our Apple ID. So I'll click on the application and we can see this is going to take 11 minutes here, maybe less. It'll download and install Xcode. Okay, so Xcode is installed. So the next step is we'll close down the App Store. I'll hit Command Space and type in Terminal to bring the terminal up. From the terminal, we'll type in Xcode dash select space dash dash install. And then we'll get a pop up here and we'll just say install on that. We can read through the license agreement and hit agree. And then uh, this will take a few minutes and we'll uh, install the command line tools. Okay, now the command line tools are installed, so we'll hit done on this pop-up here. And then we'll type in sudo space xcode build space dash license. And we'll type in our uh, administrator password. and it'll ask us to hit enter to view the agreement. We'll hit space to go through this. Of course, you'll probably want to read every single word of it like I did. <laughs> and eventually you'll get to the bottom of this and it'll ask you to type agree, print or cancel. So I'll type agree. And so now we have the Xcode portion complete. I'll close the terminal out and then I'll open up Safari. I'll open up the Mac ports website. We'll click on install Mac ports and I'm going to click on the version of the operating system I have, which is Mac OS Sierra. And this will download and I'll double click on that and it'll open up the installer and I'll just go through the prompts here, hit continue, agree, install. It'll ask me for my password again. So I'll type that in. And it will finish installing the uh, Macport software. close this screen, I'll tell it to move it to the trash. I'll close my Safari window and then I'll open the terminal back up. If you left your terminal window open, you'll probably want to close it and reopen it 
um, so it can load in the uh, proper path variables. Um, so if you have any trouble, just close the terminal and open it back up, and it should work. So now we have Mac ports installed. Um, there are, there's a lot you can learn about Mac ports, and you can look on the Mac ports website. But one thing you'll probably want to do is learn how to update it. So we'll type in sudo space port space self update, and we'll hit that, and then we'll type in our password. And this will update Mac ports. And this is new install, so it uh, doesn't probably won't need to be updated, I don't think. <laughs> okay, and then the next command you might want to run is port upgrade outdated, which after you run self-update, it tells you this. So I'll just copy and paste that into the command line. And it says there's nothing to upgrade, and that's because I haven't really installed anything yet. So um, that's the basic of getting Mac ports installed on a Mac. At this point, you can install uh, software on the command line. Uh, there are lots of packages. If you go to the Mac ports website, you can search through them. Um, just so we can have some closure to this, I'll go over installing FFmpeg. Uh, so to do that, I'll type in sudo port space install space FFmpeg. I'll hit enter. Since I typed my password in before, it remembers that for a few minutes. And now it will download everything to install FFmpeg. Okay, so that took a few minutes to install. But um, I'll type in FF and then tab here. And we'll see uh, FFmpeg, FFplay, FFprobe, and FFserver. And if you aren't familiar with FFmpeg, it's a uh, command line tool for manipulating video, and there's other uh, graphical uh, software. I think VLC maybe utilizes FFmpeg, but um, this uh, installed these four FFmpeg packages, and uh, well, I'll do a quick demonstration of those here. I'll go to my desktop by typing CD desktop, and then I'll type ls to list out my files, and you'll see this uh, IMG 9468 file. Now, uh, let me just show this real quick, a preview. This is a video of some uh, flamingos I took at the zoo the other day. It's in 4K. I'm only filming this at 720p. But uh, we can look at this. We can type in FF probe and type in IMG, and I'll hit tab to complete that. And this will show us some data on this uh, video here. You can see the resolution is... 3840 by 2160. It has the uh, bit rate, um, you know, frames per second, things like that. So, uh, say we want to convert this to a 720p video, we can type in ffmpeg i for the input file. We'll type in img underscore 9468.move and then we'll type uh, dash s and we'll type the resolution we want so I'll say 1280 x720 so that'll be 720p and then we do the output name so I'll just uh, take the original name and I'll say underscore 720p dot mp4 and I'll hit enter and it looks like it wanted a space here so I'll put a space after the dash S, and now this will convert the file to a 720p file. Okay, the file conversion is complete. So now I'll type in ls space dash lh to get a listing of the files, and we'll see there are two files here, a 73 megabyte original file, file and a 8.9 megabyte um, 720p file. If we type in FF probe on that file, we can see the stats. And you'll see here it is uh, 1280 by 720. Let me do a quick preview of that. But since we have FFmpeg installed, we can type FF play and type the name of that file and hit enter. And if we hit F, it'll pop it up full screen and we can see the file playing at full screen. So 
Now I know there's lots of GUI tools uh, that you can use to convert files, but um, if you want to do batch processing or things like that, uh, utilizing FFmpeg uh, is a pretty good option. So well, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, please click the like. And I'll be putting out uh, more videos related to FFmpeg and some more videos utilizing software I download with Macports. So if you want to keep up on any of that, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.